clip. Well, this particular shot, the background's made up of several clips of P2 footage. There's high dynamic range photography in there. There's a lot of effects and stuff going on. Something like this for a two second clip could take 10, 15 minutes. And uh, you, know, you just saw me hop right back and forth and check it in a second or two. Excellent. So, so what else did you find that would be useful kind of to summarize here? Oh, there's like no shortage of things that I could talk about. There's like the new 3D and after in uh, Photoshop that I can move into After Effects. There's the inclusion of Imagineer Systems Mocha AE tracker system that's going to really help out a lot of things. There's a whole lot of uh, floating point additions, stability improvements, speed enhancements. There's a lot of things like hey, the ben, new you cartoon know effect. It's, uh, getting a little late right now. Thank oh. you very much. Appreciate your time. Thanks so much. Thank Tony. you for taking time with us. So I uh, jokingly cut Ben off a little earlier. That there's a ton more information to talk about of what's happening in the video space here. Um, but rather than going through the details, again, for those of you on the webcast right now, you can look below here. You can see that there's a couple buttons that have now activated. And there's additional information on Adobe TV and Adobe.com. And we'll go through some details about what else exists on the website. But there's literally thousands of pages and hours and hours of content for you to actually go to a deeper dive on the video products. Let me transition now to the next segment, which is really around interactive and web design. And again, this is an area where, as Shanu pointed out, everyone is racing to try to move from print to web or web to uh, video or video to interactive. And that interactive space is what's the jewel, which is like, how do I make my, com my content even more compelling, more sticky? And the thing we've seen here, the common themes in talking to this crowd have been things around, uh, uh, they have incredible talent, right? They hire these incredibly talented people. But what the challenge is, is that you're finding that I'm having those people do remedial tasks. So I'd rather have them just working on high-end, high-skilled, high-paid jobs instead they're doing things like prepping files or maybe creating a prototype. This is something I'd like to have someone else doing. So if I could actually offload that work to someone else who was maybe less skilled and less, I'm paying less salary for them, that would be beneficial. The area of uh, understanding complex ideas. So if you have this complex interactive concept that you have, and you want to give that to your client, the challenge is how do I do that in a way where they're not going to be confused because I'm showing this static 2D prototype. How can I do that in a more interactive fashion? And of course, how do I keep track of changes, modify changes, and, and keep up with my clients' changes? So with that, again, we went uh, searching for some of the folks in the interactive space. Fortunate to have right here in San Francisco one of the leading interactive uh, design uh, groups, and that's Otapod. So Otapod is a, a local San Francisco-based uh, digital design agency. They have an incredible, stellar group of uh, clients, including Nike, Nike Skateboarding, uh, Nike Snowboarding, uh, the Museum of Science and Industry in Chicago, Sony PlayStation products, as well as Microsoft Zoom product. Um, so with that, I'd like to introduce uh, Tim Barber, who's the creative director and partner and one of the co-founders, as well as Chaz Liu, who's the interaction designer. Tim and Chaz, come on up. Hey, Chaz. Hey, Tim. So first, I noticed that uh, we didn't have this in rehearsals, but now he's got a wristband on. He's going to like, you're going to make him sweat during this demo? I certainly hope so. OK. So uh, again, you haven't had much time. You've only had a couple mm -hmm. weeks. We gave you an early copy of CS4. We'll let you kind of play with it, let your folks kind of have a spin, take a spin mm -hmm. around the block. Uh, tell me, what did you find? What was interesting? Well, we, uh, we did some stuff for Nike Skateboarding. We're always working on something for the guys at Nike Skateboarding. And, and let's say we want to add an animation of one of the team riders to the website. And, um, the best thing to do right out of the gate is get approval over the idea. And, and, and we, the way we do that is we create an interactive prototype. And so we're going to do that here in Fireworks. That's what we're looking at. We're in Fireworks. And we've got some of the elements of the website already in there. And we're going to add the elements of the animation. So here we've got Daniel. And we've got him in a couple of different positions. Now, let's say we, we've got him all lined up where we want him. And at that point, we're pretty much ready to create our prototype. So let's go ahead and export. Now, this is, this is the cool part, because when we go to export now, we can enable password protection. We can uh, turn on commenting so that as a document gets passed around, people can add their thoughts to it. We can even disable printing if we want to limit distribution of the prototype. And we can do all that because now from Fireworks, we can actually export a PDF as well as HTML. So that's what we're looking at here. And we've got some simple navigation interactivity where we navigate over to Daniel's page. And we've got him on there. And we can click on him and see him in different positions. So we're communicating the idea of how he's going to show up and what he's going to do. So we're looking at a PDF. So you're taking advantage of all the document management things we have built into PDF now. How is that significant to your workflow, though? Well, this is, this is one of those time savers. It's a huge time saver because you know, in the past, we would have had to involve a flash programmer in a simple prototype like this. Um, we also save a little bit of time just prepping files. 
come to the server, you know, for these client reviews. And so what it means is that we can have a designer, you know, mock up the, you know, this interactive prototype, create a PDF and shoot it off in an email and get pretty quick feedback. Whereas, you know, in the past it might've been a few people working for a couple of days. It's one person working for a couple of hours. So it's, it's a big time saver just in client reviews. So PDF becoming interactive versus being static now. Absolutely. Big push. Okay. So let's say we sent the PDF off to the guys at Nike Skate, and they, uh, they like the idea and they want to go forward. So we're just going to go ahead and move into Flash. And that's what we're looking at here. We've got Flash. We've uh, we brought our Fireworks prototype in, and the sync here is really great between Fireworks and Flash. Our animation parts show up ready to go. So the first thing we're going to show is one of the coolest new features of Flash, which is the inverse kinematics. And what you see Chaz doing here is he's creating a simple skeleton for Daniel. And uh, it's worth noting that in the past, we always had to write code for something like this. And it's, it's no small chore. It's pretty complex code. But now, not only do we have this visual tool, which is much easier to use, but it's all baked right into Flash. And we actually have a, a file that's a little bit further along here where we built a whole skeleton for Daniel. And we actually created some, some animations. So let's go ahead and look at those. And you can, you can see that um, you can get really complex, rich animations pretty quickly with this inverse kinematics. And again, this is all started with a single 1, 2D image that you started with. That's right. Um, and so we're going we're gonna to keep working on this. We're not done yet. Um, we're, we're, we're gonna, we have another animation here. And it, it highlights what we think is probably the most important new feature of Flash, which is the new animation model. So we've got an animation of Daniel popping his own head off here. He, he might not be super excited about that. but. Um, we've given him an extra set of arms to make up for it so he can remain productive without a head. Now, um, let's say we showed this to the client and they got a kick out of it, they really liked it, but they had some changes. This is a pretty complex animation to, to keyframe. So in the past, it would have meant going back and starting over and re-keyframing it. But now, we don't have to do that. We can make all kinds of changes. We can scale and transform the path of the animation independent of the object being animated. Um, we can even speed the whole thing up simply by compressing the timeline and all the keyframes get remapped for us. Um, and we could also go in here and take Daniel's sign and we can uh, rotate this in, in 3D because now right within Flash we have 3D effects, which is really cool. So that's what Chaz is doing here. Um, and you'll see down below, if you really want to get geeked on any of these parameters, you can use the new motion editor, which is at the bottom of the screen and essentially gives you a visual interface for tweaking